brethren, in this hallowed place, in your house, and we have gathered in the precious name of your darling Son, Jesus Christ, we come to praise you, and we come to worship you, and we come to tell you thank you, thank you for your loving kindness, and the multitude of your tender mercy. Thank you now, Lord, for the presence of your beloved Holy Spirit, for his working, for his presence, and for his power. As you, Lord, to continue to take charge, we pray and have your very own way for, Lord. You're the pilot, and we're your claim. As that you shape us, build us, bless us, even break us when you have to, then mold us in your own special way, and empower us by your spirit live lives that you'll get the glory out of each of our story. And our prayer is that you will hide your servant, the preacher behind the cross of Jesus Christ, and allow your children to even look past me and see our Savior. And our prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let our hearts say, Amen. 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 From the record, of Exodus chapter 17, reading verses 8 through 16. Exodus 17. Y'all gonna find that one now. Genesis, Exodus, you right there. Exodus 17, starting at verse 8 and reading through verse 16. Reading, of course, from the original King James text, and it reads as follows. In Amalek, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Yeah. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Yeah. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that if that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone yeah. and put it under him. Yes, and he sat there on. Mm -hmm. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hand was steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Thank you. You may be seated. With those verses in mind and perhaps other verses of scripture. Verse 13 says, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I want to talk very briefly this morning from the subject, God Gives the Victory. God Gives the Victory. We are constantly in a spiritual battle. And, and when you're in battle, it's reassuring to know that the outcome is going to come out in your favor. Yeah. Yes, many people are living as if they don't know the battle is going on, but yet the war continues. And the war involves our souls and, and where we're and our little ones will spend eternity. So it's important that as Christians and believers in Jesus Christ that we, first of all, know that we are in a war. Oh, the second thing is that we fight the good fight. Yeah. And the third thing is that the victory has already been won at Calvary. The question 
was asked in verse 7 of this text, Moses reminded the people that they had asked the question around them, is the Lord among us or not? Well, one of the greatest benefits in being a Christian is knowing that the Lord is always present with us. Jesus said, so before he went back to heaven, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. He's present with us, even when Sunday after Sunday, we're absent from church, he's still present with us. He ensures that we have everything we need for life. He gives us the necessities of life, food and water. But he also helps us, he commits you. When we face battles, when our enemies attack us, right. he's standing ready to help us. Amen. Many of us have learned that as we follow the Lord Jesus, sooner or later, I didn't say we might, sooner or later we must endure hardships. Right. I remember Paul telling Timothy, we must learn how to endure hardships as a true soldier of Jesus Christ. So, we will have battles, but we'll never fight it alone. And so we have to learn how, first of all, and my point number one, we must first recognize the enemy. Our greatest enemy, of course, is Satan. And the thing that he uses against us, he uses the flesh and he uses the world to oppose us. Satan knows that God has a plan and a purpose for every one of us. A good plan to bless us, to save us, to build us up. So he must do everything that he can to prevent us from claiming the promises of God to prevent us from receiving the blessings that God has for us. And the only way that he can stop us is that we are disobedient to the word of God. I'm going to give you this one free today. Jesus never argued with Satan. And when Jesus spoke, Satan never argued back with Jesus. Because whenever Satan tried to tempt Jesus, all Jesus did was spoke to him the word of God. Every time Satan tried to trap Jesus like he got our children trapped from going to church, from studying the Bible, from loving one another, from loving God. Every time he tried to trap Jesus, Jesus just laid some scripture on him. Every time he said something to him, now I can do this for you, Jesus said, it is written. Satan knew he can't argue with the word of God because the word of God is the truth. And we sit there in the day and folks all day long about what Reverend such and such said or what somebody else said. Jesus didn't go with that. Jesus said, it is written. He can't change what it's written by God. And we said, I heard he had to go to another tree. So instead of trying to be smart than everybody and trying to hide all the folks, just go with God's word. Stand on God's word. And I guarantee you one thing, you will stand. That's not a matter of if you don't know how to stand on God's word, you're going to keep on falling for anything. He uses material things. He uses circumstances and even uses people to oppose us. But just as Israel was delivered from Egypt by the power of God, so God's people today have been delivered from this evil world through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. In other words, you have been freed from bondage. You don't have to see it now because you have to. You see it now because you want to. Because you're in bondage, you do what they tell you to do. But when you're free, you can make up your own mind. We have already been delivered through Jesus Christ. Through faith in him. You see now, if we really say we are in the world physically speaking, but
But spiritually, we are not on this world. Therefore, we must not be conformed to this world. It's hard. Brother Arthur Red, to be a real Christian, and we're trying to follow every trend and fad that's going on in the world. It's hard to put all your faith in Christ and still put your faith in men and in money and other things. Satan uses all these things to keep our minds off of the prize, which is our high calling in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're different than folk in the world, Jonathan. We say it. We're going to heaven and we know it. Therefore, we can forgive people. We can love everybody, even our enemies. Love them enough to try to keep them from going where they're going if they don't repent. We must renounce the things of the flesh. And we must resist the attacks of the devil. Scripture tells us, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Don't tarry with him. Don't play with him. Don't dialogue with him. Don't argue with him. He loves an argumentative person. Because it creates chaos and confusion. When you tell him, go read what God's word says and come back to me, he'll go for a while. He already know what it says. His job is to get us to stop following him. Stop trusting in him. You see, the enemy in our text the Amalekites, they were the descendants of Jacob's brother, Esau. You do remember Isaac's sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was first, and Jacob was trying to catch him. They were twin and come out first, but God waited for Jacob to come out second. But God loved Jacob. Esau was a worldly man. The Bible described Esau, even though he was Jacob's twin, as a profane person. The NIV Bible interprets the word profane as godless. A godless person is a dangerous person. A godless person will say or do anything. The worst place you can be in this world is the one to come on the way you have to be away from God. That's what real death is, separation from God. Because once you're separated from God, you're separated from love, you're separated from peace, you're separated from eternal life. He's a profane man, godless man. It comes from the Latin word that means outside the temple. Huh? I remember the time when, when it was hard on folks who looked like us. We went outside the church. We were inside the church. But now we have fallen for this world and love it more than we do the world nowadays. And we have found outside the temple more than we are inside. I tell you something else I read about what is described as a profane person. A pro profane person is described as something that anybody or anything can step on. step on you when you're profane. Esau, these are the sinners you see. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Esau lived for the world and for the flesh. And he despised spiritual things. He lived for this. Everything that the world could give him, he loved it. He, he loved the flesh. So a lot of birthright for a bowl of pot, porridge. A lot of folk like that today. They, 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 they talk a good religious thing, but they love the world more than they love the word and the Lord. They don't show up anything spiritual, but anything physical, they're all there. Let me tell you something about the thing in this world. Sooner or later, they go in. And the only way things last forever on the good side is if you have faith in Jesus Christ. You're going to live forever with him. Everything you thought you missed out here, they're going to be a million times better with him forever. But if you happen to be on that crowd that's wanted here and wanted now, it, it, it'll set you up for failure. 
You can enjoy it here. I don't care if you enjoy it 110 years. When you die, it's going to leave you. It won't help you anymore. But then you got to stand before the judge and tell him about your things. He's going to tell you what you really own was nothing. He will give you your, not reward, he will give you your punishment. Not y'all, man. I'm talking about the folks outside the temple. For my Esau folks. Esau opposed his brother Jacob. You know the story, he threatened to kill him. And so his descendants opposed the children of Israel and they threatened to annihilate me. That's the enemy. The enemy smiles in your face, but the enemy is ready to stab you in your back. The enemy wants to destroy you. Jesus said it. The thief comes, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you're in me, in Jesus, you don't have to worry. For I have come so that you can have life and have it to the fullest. No matter what condition you find yourself in, uh, when you're in Jesus, uh, you can tell somebody, uh, I have learned uh, to be content. And God, all right. The enemy chose to attack Israel. Now you must remember, Israel had just been delivered from Egypt after over 400 years of bondage, hard work, making bricks all day for Pharaoh. And God had delivered them. And then at the beginning of this chapter, not long after they've been delivered, they were ready to stone Moses because there was no water in the camp. And Moses went to God and said, these people are about to stone me. But God said, get the elders and go stand by the rock. And when I tell you to, just strike the rock. And when he struck the rock, the water came out. And that's when Moses reminded them that didn't y'all ask if the Lord with us or not. And God already. But now, they're still new. But I brought all that up, all that up just to tell you, they had never been in a real fight. A battle. And now, they're being attacked by Amos. The biblical record was not shown where the Jews ever fought any battles in Egypt. But once they were delivered from bondage, they discovered that they had enemies. Isn't that how it is with a real Christian? When we're going nowhere in life, I know I got one or two witnesses. Everybody want to give you a ride. And when you're headed nowhere, everybody want to give you a ride. But when you start getting serious about walking with Jesus, you find out uh, that you got him. You find out that some of those folks that were hanging around your house all the time were hanging around for your good. They were just waiting on your downfall. You didn't have, didn't know that you had enemy until you got on the Lord's side. When we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ, then his enemies become our enemies. And therefore we must deal with our enemies as he did. We must fight the good fight of faith. And faith is turning our enemies over to the Lord. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I shall repay. The reason I'm still standing today and folks who try to put me down or down and gone is because I turned them over to Jesus. I didn't try to fight them the way they tried to fight me. I learned how to get on my knees and pray for them and turn it over to Jesus. Love the hell out of them. You make everything all right. You see, we have to have these battles. We need these battles of life to balance the blessings of life. Yeah. Some of us have been pretty good Christians, 
till we got a little something. You start getting blessed and now you don't even want to come to church. Sunday morning, I got to get to work done on my house. I got to go get something done on my car. I got to cut my grades. I got to fix my lawnmower. Y'all know how y'all talk. Let me tell you what you're on. I told you one time, I'll tell you again. You're on left. You get a little blessing, and then you're getting on God. So you have to have some balance to balance the blessing. So you don't, you learn that I must trust in the Lord in everything. I got to praise him when I'm up. I got to praise him when I'm down. I got to serve him when it's going good. I got to serve him more when it's going bad. If it wasn't for my enemies, brother, then I wouldn't be here today. Recognize the enemy. Use the word of God to deal with it. Don't waste your time arguing with them. Read your Bible. Tell them the information. Y'all want to slap me back, but it's written. <laughs> I can't slap because it's written. Turn it over to you. Recognize the enemy. You overcome him with love. So now, let's look at the strategy. When he show you how Satan fights, he doesn't go by the rules. He fights good. Moses talks about this again in Deuteronomy. He's trying to attack him. The Amalekites attack Israel suddenly from the high. Huh? Attack him from the rear suddenly. From behind. That's the way the devil is. He's sneaking. You notice when Paul gives the armor of God, he speaks about everything except the real God. Because yeah. you see, when you're walking with God, if you got all this armor on, God got your back. They attack suddenly. Then these folks are just on their way to the promised land. Just got the water bill paid from heaven, fresh water in the camp. On that way, and then him say it out of nowhere. Attack him from the rear. The weakest part of the camp. They struck those Jews who were weary and feeble, who were at the back of the march. That's how he attacks. He's always trying to attack us at our weakest point. They attack after Israel has just received a great blessing. That's why we got to be on guard. Even when things are going well, you got to watch out. Be careful when a man thinks that he stands, lest he falls. Satan knows our weakest points. He knows when we are not ready for our soul. That's why I heard Jesus say, we must watch and pray. Because the Spirit is ready. But the flesh is weak. Spirit ready. Uh, on Sunday morning, get on up and go to the Lord's house and thank him and praise him and let the world know who, uh, who side you're on. Uh, but just before you get there to obey the spirit, the flesh said, well, you know you kind of stayed out a little late last night. You know you worked overtime last night. You know you got a little slight headache. The spirit is ready. But the flesh is weak. So watch out for the strategies of old Satan. You don't know what Sunday God got mapped out for you to get everything done that he's offered. But you pick and choose what something you become. Already have a knockdown. Where you gonna be? Don't let Amalek slip up behind you and catch you with your guard down. Now let's look at the victory. The enemy has attacked from the rear of peaceful people who are on their way of to the promised land. And for no reason, they attack and start destroying the weakest members of Israel. But I'm glad uh, Moses.
close this up. So what was going on? God always uh, gives his leader a vision. And he saw them uh, attacking. And even though Israel had never been in a battle like this, I'm glad Moses said, Joshua, choose some men uh, and go out uh, and fight. And I'm glad uh, that God led uh, Joshua Moses to go to Joshua. Because he had said to some of us, uh, the first thing we were saying, choose who and go where and do what. Uh, we ain't had basic training, huh? We ain't had summer camp, huh? We are not even organized, huh? But Joshua didn't walk all those points, huh? It's good huh? to obey God's servant, huh? When God speaks to you, huh? Look at this, huh? All the years, huh? That God had his Israelites, huh? Working in Egypt, huh? Sun up to sun down, huh? Building bricks, huh? They may not but while they were building up bricks, uh -huh, they were building up muscles uh -huh, to go out and fight. Uh -huh. Sometimes when it seems like uh -huh, things are working against you, uh -huh, when God uh -huh, is in the mix, the uh -huh, same things uh, that you think uh -huh, are working against you uh -huh, are really working for you. Uh -huh. The very things uh -huh, that you think uh -huh, are meant to tell you down, uh -huh, they're meant uh -huh, to build you up. Uh -huh. Go out and fight. Yes, even at the Red Sea, Israel didn't have to fight. But remember, Moses told him, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. And now we see them on that. Pilgrim journey, Israel will have to enter into the battle and trust the Lord for the victory. Ain't God all right? It doesn't matter what the battle is all about. It could be a health issue. It could be a wealth issue. It could be a, a relationship issue, uh, but I'm glad uh, when God uh, sends you uh, into the battle, uh, all you got to do uh, is trust uh, in the Lord uh, with all uh, of your heart uh, and lean not uh, to your own uh, understanding. Uh, him in all your ways, and I get a witness, and he will direct your path. I heard John say in First John 5 and 4, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even
Thank God for Jesus. So when you go through your trials, be on your feet. Play the strong and back. Go look, read it for yourself. God will let the world know and let it in watch know that wherever you go, I'm with you. Even when the enemy tries to attack your weakest part, I'm going to be your strength. And let God be for us. Who can be against us? So when you go through your trials, even a bad time, don't try to sing it like me, because I, I, I reckon enough. Don't you make no words to not do it. <laughs> sing to yourself, that will about to get mad. <laughs> on my way home, Lord, on my way home. Well, I'm on my way home, Lord. On my way home. Well, I'm on my way home, Lord. Jesus can't do it. 